Hello everybody! Welcome back to Needle Workshop! My name is Emily and I'm back today with another tutorial for a new pattern inspired by Setsuna from Yashahime. Today we'll be making her full armor set. This pattern is from our Half Demon series and, as always, is available online for download along with the fully written tutorial. The pattern will be linked in the description box below. The written tutorial also includes tons of info on how to properly measure yourself, how to print the pattern along with material suggestions and the tools used in this tutorial. We worked really hard on this guy, so please make sure to check it out. Before we get started, I'd like to preface this video with some important information. To begin with, I'd like to mention that all the foam for this project was purchased from True North Cosplay. This isn't sponsored in any way, but I figured it'd be useful information for my fellow Canadian cosplayers. I find their prices are very affordable without the outrageous shipping costs, which often comes with the Canadian territory. All of my airbrush paints were purchased from Maple Airbrush Supplies, which once again has very good prices with decent shipping costs, which really came through in these times of pandemic. Now, there are many ways in which you can make this armor. Personally, we ended up using foam as a base and covering most of the armor with faux leather fabric and painting the half rod sections. Alternatively, you can easily nix the fabric altogether and paint the whole thing instead. You can also look into using warbler or other materials that you are more comfortable with. Other important tidbits include making sure your craft knife is always well sharpened for a clean foam cut and making sure to prime your foam with a flexible finish. Also noteworthy is that all of the elastic used are one inch wide and everything was glued in place using barge. Obviously, we'd also like to thank Mira Scarlet for collaborating with us on the production of this costume. I think she's looking really sharp in the costume and honestly, we're kind of honored that she accepted to work with us considering that we are complete nobodies. So make sure to check out her work. All the links will be in the description box below. Also noteworthy, she styled the wig herself and made the shoes and the props. Now, let's get started. All right, people, we're going to start by assembling our foam pieces. The first step will be to cut out all of the pieces from foam. Trace your pieces onto the foam and make sure to mark all of your notches. Ideally, you'd want to do this with a metallic Sharpie, but I only happen to have a black one on hand. Using a sharp craft knife, cut out all of your pieces. Here are all of the pieces laid out side by side. They include the bodice armor pieces, the elbow pads, the pauldron, and the circle connectors. In a well-vented area and with the appropriate respirator, start assembling all of your pieces to each other using contact cement glue. You want to apply a thin, even layer on each side. Let's sit for the appropriate amount of time and then glue the sides to each other, making sure to align your notches as you do so. Refer to your glue's instruction to apply it properly. You can also refer yourself to the instruction manual to know which pieces go together. You'll need to leave the right hand side of the bodice armor unattached. We'll be adding a zipper there later to allow the wearer to get in and out of the garment. Here are my other pieces so far, the pauldron, the elbow pads piece one and two, still not glued together, and my circle connector piece one and two glued together. For the next part, there's some light sanding to be had. You'll want to sand down the outer edges of the circle connector two into a light curve. This is to mimic the shape from the art reference. I'm using a really high grit sandpaper to do this. You'll also need to lightly sand the edges of the elbow pad piece two. For the next part, I'm using my heat gun to try and help shape out some of the pieces. I started with curving out my body armor and followed with shaping out my elbow pad pieces. The heat also helps smooth out the sanding.
In the end, I'll be using my Pokeball to help round out the pulchrons, elbow pad pieces, and my armor's chest area. Here are my pieces post sanding and post heat treatment. We're now going to attack the assemblage of the faux leather cover. We opted for this very light stretch, high texture faux leather. Because it is a very light and stretch, we're going to have to include in our seam allowances with the exception of the center front seam, which I'll be eliminating altogether. Starting by tracing all of your pieces onto the wrong side of your fabric, you'll need to eliminate the center front seam by flipping your center front piece. Make sure there's no gap when tracing it. Since the full leather does have a little bit of stretch, we'll be able to stretch it out to the front of the foam with no problem. You'll need to add seam allowance to the edges of the pieces. Unfortunately, the seam allowance in the video is wrong and I've had to restart this part. So here's a better visual reference of the seam allowance that needs to be added. Feel free to screenshot this part if needs be. The next part is assembling all of the leather pieces together in the same order as we did with the foam. I'm actually going to switch to my usual filming table for the next part. Starting with your center front piece, line up your front side pieces, making sure to align your notches and sew together with a regular straight stitch. Iron your seam allowance open. Hot tip, when using faux leather, make sure to protect the leather with a scrap piece of fabric when ironing it. Repeat the same process with your center back and side back pieces. Next, you'll need to assemble the front and back bodice pieces at the left side seam. The bodice piece is now done and ready to be assembled to the foam. Next, assemble the pauldron pieces together at the top seam. And that will be all of the sewing for our fabric pieces. So let's go back to the heavy duty table. Okay, let's start gluing the fabric to the foam. Starting with the elbow pads, apply a thin layer of the contact cement glue to your fabric, followed by a thin layer of glue to your foam. Let's sit until the glue is tacky and then place your fabric over the foam. The elbow pad coverings will need to be stretched into place. You can then cut off some excess while leaving about 2 cm of seam allowance. Reapply glue to the underside of the foam and fabric to finish off the piece. The following piece I'm tackling is my pauldron. I've pinned the fabric piece along the seam to help keep it positioned. Otherwise, the process is a rinse and repeat of the previous step with a single important change. You will not be rolling the fabric over the edges of the piece. On the contrary, the fabric edges should be slightly shorter than the foam edges. Same thing will be applied in certain areas of the bodice piece. All areas where no seam allowance was added should be shorter than the edge of the foam. Now that we've done applying the fabric to our foam pieces, we need to apply all of our half rods. Each rod will need to be cut in certain angles so that they can interlock with one another properly. To do this, you can use the blueprint indicated on each piece as reference. Once you have all of your half rods cut out, 
you'll need to trace out the width of them onto your armor piece. This will indicate where the glue needs to be applied. Start by gluing each half rod to each other at each end. Next, apply the glue to the armor piece and make sure to stay within the line we traced out earlier. Then apply your glue to the back of your half rod. Let's sit until tacky and then carefully apply the half rod to the armor. Try to keep your edges as aligned as possible. On the bodice piece, we only applied half rods on the top and bottom of the front piece and on the bottom of the back piece. We wanted to avoid adding any extra thickness to the waist where it wasn't necessary. Notice the rods were also thinned out in the ends for a cleaner finish. For the elbow pads, I first glued piece 2 to piece 1. Afterwards, I applied a half rod all around to help give the elbow pads a bit of a cleaner finish. Once all my rods were applied, I sanded the edges flat, which I completely forgot to film. And then he treated them with a heat gun, which I also forgot to film. Yay me! Once that was done, I added silicone caulking to fill up all of my gaps. Next, you'll first need to protect your fabric areas with painter's tape before priming the foam. We use three layers of Plasti Dip along with one layer of Liquitex. Once your layers of primers are properly dried, you can proceed to painting your edges. We used a combination of airbrushing with hand painting for the weathering. The whole thing was finished with three coats of varnish. Once all your paint and varnish is done, you can remove the painter's tape, which I believe is the most satisfying part. Apply your detachable zipper to the side using contact cement. To make sure the zipper was really well secured, we also added a few extra hand stitches. Moving on to your elbow piece, after measuring out the amount of elastic we need, we glued them into place using contact cement. The elastic allows for the piece to stretch as needed for a comfortable wear. In an attempt to make the elastic band a little bit more subtle, we used a spandex covered foam piece and sewed it by hand to the elastic band. Now let's focus on our pauldron piece. We're first going to glue in place an elastic to the sides using contact cement. Make the elastic extra long for now. We'll adjust the length later on. Now we're going to prep our two adjustment pieces. Cut two pieces of elastic 9 cm long and fold them in half over your buckles. Our buckles have a third bar in the middle that's completely unnecessary, but that's what we had on hand in these quarantine times. Hold the elastic in place with a simple whip stitch around the edges. We'll be positioning one of the adjustment pieces to the front side of the pauldron as indicated on the pattern. The buckles should be facing towards the edge of the armor. The other adjustment piece will be attached to the right side of the chest piece as indicated on the pattern. The buckle will once again be placed towards the outer edge. The last finishes for the pauldron include placing a velcro piece in the shoulder area and measuring the length of elastic you'll need under your arms and finishing it off with a velcro. Last but not least, attach a 23 cm long elastic to the circle connector. This piece is actually patterned out in the written tutorial with specific velcro placement. Make sure to stitch in place all the velcro first and then you can glue the elastic to the armor connector. 
And here's a visual preview on how to assemble your armor. First, you'll need to attach the circle connector to the pauldron's adjustment piece. And then attach the other side of the circle connector to the chest piece's adjustment piece. Lastly, you'll need to sew one last velcro piece onto your shirt to secure the pauldron in place. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. All right, everyone, hope this video tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments section below. If you like this kind of content, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of all our upcoming tutorials. If you'd like to know more about our upcoming projects, feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There's a lot of content there that you will not see on YouTube. So until next time, good luck with your projects, guys. Bye-bye.